Welcome back to these technical videos. We're getting them back up and running. Today, we are talking about a genetics topic, specifically hybrid vigor. Even if you're not a farmer, you're probably aware of this concept of inbreeding. That is the mating of two closely related parents, leading to either a deterioration or an exaggeration in negative traits in their offspring, whether that's the development of a Habsburg jaw in European nobility or potentially reduced fertility in line-bred cattle. Hybrid vigor, also called heterosis, is exactly the opposite. So this is the phenomenon where mating two highly unrelated individuals leads to the enhancement of certain traits in their offspring. These offspring are more than the average of their parents. Stepping away from livestock for a moment, many commercial crop varieties are hybrids, whether that's cereals, forage crops, horticultural crops, everything from cabbage to cannabis has hybrid varieties taking the advantage of hybrid vigor. If you ever see the term F1, whether that's to do with a plant or an animal, that is the first cross of two different varieties. We talked in an earlier technical about the concept of heritability. A given trait will be affected so much by the environment and so much by genes, and this varies by trait. Some traits are highly influenced by environment and only a little by genes. Some are highly influenced by genes and only a little by the environment, and everything between. A trait with low heritability is affected mostly by the environment and only a little by genes. Therefore, trying to select for it out of a breeding population can make for very slow progress. The good news is that hybrid vigor is especially pronounced in those traits with low heritability. So for livestock, that would be things like fertility, that would be things like pre-weaning growth, pre-weaning livability. Now, of course, this isn't a new idea. Farmers have been harnessing this in their livestock for centuries. If you think about the traditional stratified sheep system, for its drawbacks, it really does capitalize on hybrid vigor by breeding hill sheep with the very different blue-faced Leicester to create the queen of sheep, the mule, whether that's a Welsh, North of England, Scotch, Cheviot mule, swap the blue-faced Leicester for a border Leicester, and of course then you're in the half-bred system, a very similar idea. In cattle, traditional UK cross is the blue grey cow, that's a whip-bred shorthorn bull over a black Galloway cow, gives you this very attractive sort of blue roan cow, very hairy, good for the hill, very traditional type, not necessarily the most popular these days, but interestingly, it does compare very favorably with other breeds in some surveys of hill cattle profitability. More recently, you've got the rise of hybrid terminal sires, whether that's rams, think Charolais Beltex or Suftex or bulls, lots more Belgian Blue Cross Limmy bulls seem to be going around. On the cow side, you've got black baldies, which are globally popular. You've seen them on the vlog a couple of times. That's that rotational cross between Aberdeen Angus and Herefords. At home in the UK, we've also seen the rise of the Sim Ling. That's a simmental bull over a Ling cow to produce this Sim Ling female, which have found favor with a lot of UK farmers. Even the dairy cows have gotten on the act just look at the Kiwi cross cows you find in New Zealand and the pro cross dairy cows. That's a three-way rotational cross between Holstein's Viking Reds and Montbelliards. On top of this, we can then start to get into the composite breeds. Composites are stable intermating populations originating from crossbred populations. In very simple terms, a load of breeds have been crossed, but then no new blood has been allowed in only crossbreeding within that population is allowed. Each of the breeds chosen provides some desirable characteristic, whether that's fertility, frame, growth, conformation, milk, and so on. For beef cattle, the most high profile composite is probably the stabilizer, originally a composite of Aberdeen Angus, Hereford, Gelbvi, and Simmental, and lastly, some South Devon. You also have Ling cattle, a composite originating out of beef shorthorns and Highland cattle. As for you sheep guys, you'll be more and more aware of the various composites being marketed by the likes of Innovis, Easy Dams, and similar. The recency of that crossbreeding in these composite populations means they capitalize on a lot of that hybrid vigor, with a caveat that as the generations go on, because that population is now closed off, there will be a partial loss of that heterosis. So is hybrid vigor a freebie? In a lot of ways, it is. Not many commercial farmers should or need to run purebred populations unless they want to. 
There are a couple of drawbacks. The first is that if you want to breed your own replacements, suddenly breeding decisions start to become a lot more complicated, especially in smaller flocks or herds. Artificial insemination is a great tool to help with this complexity in cattle. That might lead you to then need to buy in replacement females. That's not necessarily a bad thing to do for a lot of farmers, but you have to then consider the health risks are those breeders of those replacements selecting for the traits that matter to you? The second drawback is that because you're introducing more diversity, guess what? The lamb or calf crop, whatever we're talking about, suddenly becomes less uniform. Sometimes that's not a problem. Sometimes that can cause a few difficulties in marketing those offspring consistently. Both of these drawbacks are arguably where composites have their place. They balance this heterosis with uh, simplicity and uniformity. So that's a very quick rundown of hybrid vigor. As always, I have stuck a load of links for further reading if you're interested in the video description. If you like that, you wanna see more technicals, if you've got any suggestions, of course, always very open to that. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give the video a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought. Other than that, I'll see you next time.